So good afternoon everyone. I'm here with my class number 17, right? So this is English class number 17. And if you remember exactly like what we did in the last class, it was all about the vocabulary. <clears throat> so before I could proceed further, you got to very clearly recapitulate about the certain things that we discussed. Yes, we were doing or we have finished a short story by Vekam Muhammad Bashir that is Oru Manushyan and after that we did discuss about the question and answers related to the chapter and after that you actually have some specific exercises with respect to the vocabulary exercise that we need to have in the class. So yesterday in my class we discussed about the three different categories, how a word can be categorized into three different forms or so. So before doing or before going to the categorization of the words or something, it becomes very very important for all of us to understand what is the part of speech of a specific or a given word is. Getting? So you should be knowing about the part of speech of the word first of all and then probably you can change the word that is you should be in a position to play with the words in terms of changing it into its antonym form or giving the synonym form of that particular word or you should be knowing what is the prefix form of that word or what is the suffix form of that word and you should also be knowing to identify whether this word is a homophone or a homonym or something. So broadly speaking, so these are the three categories of the words that we actually discussed yesterday. Out of these three categories, that is antonyms, synonyms, prefixes and suffixes, homonyms and homophones. Out of these three broad categories of the uh, words, first of all, with this respect to this exercise in this particular chapter, we were concentrating mainly on the antonyms and the synonyms part. If you look at your textbook, back to it again you will understand that we had completed those five words which have been hinted in terms of understanding whether this word is a synonym that is what we were actually doing here okay now page number same one that is 38 the next question that is given to you is the choose the word that is opposite in meaning to the word in capital letters choose the word that is opposite in meaning to the word in capital letter so wherever you find uppercase you will have to give the opposite word to that so what we do is that we will just have to and uh, you know um, see what exactly are the opposite words for these words okay so look at the question he has not asked you to say it as a antonym or so he is asking you to choose the word or give the word opposite to its meaning so obviously the first one word is up and what will you take you know it give you know it large happy thin these are the five words and rest yeah there are three more words on the next page as well okay so by tight and cruel okay so i hope all of you know these answers but once again i'll just repeat these answers or I'll just write down i mean speak these answers you will have to just answer it up down is given give it is take large it is small. So what I need to do here is that large. What is the uh, synonyms? The other two words will act as synonyms. Large and big. Isn't it? In a similar way. Up. Above and height will be synonyms. No, no. What I am telling you here is that words are given with some other words in the form of the options there. So why don't we do it in another way in the form of doing the synonyms for, as well, for that as well. Isn't it? So this is a dual exercise that we can do with one single question. What do you say? Isn't it? So large, huge, big, they both are the synonyms. But the opposite word to that is small, which you will take as an answer. In similar way, happy, glad, synonym, sad, opposite, calm, 
No worries. Like In a similar way, thin, thick is the answer, you know that. Short, skinny, both are synonyms. Then buy, sell, have, hold, maybe synonyms. Tight, loose, free, firm, can be the synonyms. Similar way, cruel, answer is kind. The other two words, bad and nice. Nice cannot be a synonym. Please understand, what am I trying to tell you here is that not to confuse you, but why don't we think in the other way as well so that we can understand the other form of the words that have been given. Clear all of you? Okay. Then let me come on to the next question. And the next question that we have here is that use the suitable prefixes to form antonyms. Now this is what we have to understand here. For example, yesterday when we were discussing about the importance on antonyms and synonyms or the definition for the word antonym and synonym. Okay. For example, if you have a word like hero, okay, if I ask you what is the uh, opposite word for that, you immediately you will tell what? Villain, isn't it? Generally, we tend to understand in that way. That is, we say villain. But if I have to ask you to give me not the opposite word, but give me the antonym for this word, what would what would it be? What will you give me as an answer to this? If I ask you, give me the antonym form of hero, you would straight away say that. Hero, villain, you would say. Generally, tendency is that. Hero is nothing but villain or so. But if I am not asking you the opposite word, but I am asking you the antonym part of that word. So, how would you give me? So, hero, you just add anti hero. You are adding anti, which is making the word into its antonym part. Isn't it? So this becomes an antonym part, but whenever you are doing an exercise in a word to form it into an you know, antonym, knowingly or unknowingly, you are also doing the prefixes. So what I would like to tell you here is that whenever you are playing with a word to make it into its antonym part, knowingly or unknowingly, you are also doing the prefix form of the same word also. Understood? Did you understand what I am saying? Trying to say here. Yeah. So, anti-hero. For example, you are having fever. You go to a doctor. Okay. And he will give you some tablets and he asks you, go and take these tablets for some few, four, three days or so. Come back to me if it doesn't subside. Okay, so you go home, you take those tablets, but you are not being subsided with the fever. So what you do is that you visit the doctor again. So what do you think that the doctor will give you? The doctor will start giving you antibiotics. Part of this word, antibiotics. In the first visit of yours, the doctor prescribed you only the biotic tablets. Okay, when this did not work, when these tablets did not work, he prescribed you something that is called as anti. So, this is a word, anti, I'm sorry, biotic. You have just added A-N-T-I -A -A to make it into its antonym form. At the same time, you have also made this word to give its prefix form. Getting, for example, change. There are many changes. Okay. The team is unchanged. Change is a word which you all know. Okay. If I have to give you an antonym of that word or if I have to ask you a prefix of this word, you say that the team for Australian cricket series is unchanged. Can you say like that? Change, unchange. Biotic, antibiotic. So, antonyms when you are doing the exercise on antonyms, knowingly or unknowingly, you are also doing the prefix form of the word. 
that is what you got to understand in this video all right so in this class the main thing that you will have to understand is that how can you make the words into its antonym form and while doing the antonym form of the words directly or indirectly you are also doing what you are also doing huh. you are also doing the prefix form of that particular word for example size resize cycle recycle isn't it so re r e is a word that you are using and this word can be a prefix at the same time this word can also be a what antonym that is what you got to understand okay the next exercise that you have here is that on the same thing that is use a suitable prefixes to make it or to form and the antonyms by using il dis un im mis in okay for example climax what is the climax end of the story isn't it anti climax okay out of this in a similar way healthy unhealthy don't you eat unhealthy food doctors would say isn't it unhealthy healthy unhealthy so un is acting as both antonym as well as prefix to this word mobile mobile wherever we can carry but a place where it is stick to one particular place it is immobile isn't it something that cannot be moved so you are adding im so im is acting here as both prefix as well as a suffix then please pleasing pleasing personality displease dis so dis is acting as a prefix as well as an antonym then prove proving improving okay approve is other one okay here it is prove approve disapprove that is also there don't get confused here so prove i want to prove my case okay so what do you say i want to prove my case i can improve my case so uh, both acting as a suffix as well as a antonym sorry not suffix prefix acting as a prefix as well as a an antonym logical illogical conception misconception misconception idea then orthodox unorthodox orthodox means one who is lively one who is very near to god one who believes in the uh, existence of the god theist isn't it atheist you say that right and the similar way orthodox is a person one who follows the uh, what can i say uh, one who follows his religion very strictly he is called as what he is called as orthodox person so orthodox unorthodox sane insane okay sane is one who is a correct person or a normal normal person insane is you know who is perfect imperfect isn't it so the word which is perfect can also be used as imper imperfect so what we have done in today's class is that we have just understood or we have just made like antonyms are directly or indirectly related to the same word like you know prefixes prefixes cannot be changed as cannot be mischanged as antonyms or antonyms cannot be just so whenever you are doing a word into its antonym form directly or directly indirectly knowingly or unknowingly you are also doing it into the prefix form of the word so what is prefix adding before the start uh, start of a word or so and that's what we keep on doing it with the antonym forms all right okay now provide antonyms for the following words from the lesson avoid using affixes okay so you cannot make it into from the form of affixes let us straight away give the words in terms of the antonym so antonyms means obviously you are doing the prefix form not the suffix one rescue what is rescuing it rescues is it so just find out what is the answer remember forget wake what is the word that we had wake indistinct you can give that answer then madness fool whatever that you want to say inhabitant habitant distant near lend take dirty clean expensive inexpensive crowded empty quiet quiet place noisy forward 
backward, laugh, cry, open, close. So what you are actually doing here is that there are certain words that were given and you were asked to make it into its antonyms for the following words. But what happens is that whenever you are doing a word into its antonym part, okay, you may either talk to them as a correct word which can be directly changed as an opposite word or so or a word, line or a word which can be prefixed. For example, out of these words that we have talked discussed today is that one word that was given was expensive expensive opposite word what is the opposite word for that we do not have any but what we do is that we add that in inexpensive in or un we always have a confusion so that's why you should be knowing very specifically about what you're supposed to do in the form of unexpensive we don't say but it is inexpensive in a similar way one more word that we had Habitant. What is habitant? People who are li living. Habitat. Heard of that word? No. Inhabitant. Inhabitant. So that becomes an opposite word to that particular thing. Habitual inhabitant. Okay. In that particular way, you will have to think of. So with this class, I come to an end here with the unit that we had. That is Oru Manushin by Vaikam Muhammad Bashir. And we have very uh, what can I say? Briefly, not in detail, very briefly, skeletal part is what we have understood. That is, we have just understood only the huh, antonym and synonym part. Just is the beginning. I have just given you what, uh, what does it mean? What is the definition of this word or so? And you got to definitely know about the antonyms and synonym parts and later on you may have to also understand what are prefixes and suffixes and in the earlier class we have just begun with homonyms and homophones but in the coming time we will learn some more words using in order to improve our what what are we improving by doing these words or playing with these words we are actually improving or increasing our vocab so to say vocabulary you are coming to know here about the use of the different words which makes us understand that we have are in a position to understand or play with the words by changing the meanings you change the meanings into its opposite form nothing but antonym you give the similar word to that same word by without changing the note of that word is called as a synonym okay something that we start at the beginning of a word is also called as a prefix which is unlikely similar to what we do with an exercise with antonym and then suffix we add something at the end of the word that is called as suffix and coming to homonym and homophones words which are pronounced with the same sound but with different spellings homophones word which is used with the same spelling but used in two different contexts that is called as homonym or something so i just wind up this session here giving on a note like you know today we have completed a certain or a very brief discussion on the antonyms and synonyms that was given at the end of the short story that we discussed Uru Manushin. So I stop here and I will start continuing the next session in the next class of mine with the next unit that we are having it. Alright, so thank you and meet you in the next class.